Welcome to episode two of Wild Angle. I know we've got a name, Wild Angle. It's brilliant. Thanks to Rich for being creative. And without further ado, let's get on with it. Well, hasn't the world changed in a week, eh? I mean, most of us are on lockdown now, and that's exactly right. Stay safe, stay at home, because you are gonna save lives, and it will work. But of course, that doesn't mean that you don't go out into your garden, and gardens are a great place for keeping your mental health uh, as good as it can be, which in these times is really important. So is photography. So if we can combine these two together, we thought, then that would be a great thing. So this week, Susie and I made uh, a video on the basics of garden bird photography and I mean the basics this is beginner level this is for people who have never tried it before taking you through in Rousey style all the steps to getting some really really good bird pictures in your garden and there's nothing wrong with photographing blue tits great tits robins or anything else it's actually really difficult it's really addictive and if you want to see how to do it watch this first well there's no doubt we're in very challenging times you know we're, we're stuck inside we're told we can't go out but there's one place where we can go as photographers, which is absolutely brilliant for photography, and a lot of us overlook it. It's our garden. Our garden is wonderful. They tell you gardening is great for your mental health. Well, so is photography is great for your mental health. Whenever I do photography and I take pictures, I feel really good. So being out in the garden and taking pictures, what a brilliant combination. So here's my very, very quick and simple guide to getting some great garden pictures. All right, let's start with very simple garden bird photography. So we're gonna look at blue tits and great tits and stuff like that, robins, whatever, coming to a feeder, okay? That's what we're gonna do first. The most important thing we've gotta do is find a branch for them to land on because we don't want to land on the feeder. We wanna photograph them on a branch where they're waiting to go onto the feeder, a natural looking branch. And that branch is actually Quite hard to find, even though we've got a garden here and there's lots of, there's lots of branches here, um, you've got to look for some very specific things. So if you come with me now, I'll try and show you the best branch to find, Rouse's best branch. So choosing the perfect branch is important and here's something I've just seen. Now, it, it's a little bit long because of course it will blow in the wind. You want to get something that's dead, okay? You don't want to get something that's alive because it's too floppy. It's gonna, it's just gonna, something's gonna land on it and it's gonna flop up and down. So you want something that's, that's dead, but that's just dead boring. I mean, there's nothing interesting about that at all. It's got a nice curve. I hate these people that have these straight sticks. It looks horrible. So you need something with a little bit of a bend and a twist, but it's gotta have some color. It's gotta have some interest in it. It's got, it's nothing. It's about as boring as the Spurs defense. You know, it's rubbish. Um, so that's not something we're gonna use. We're gonna look for something a lot better, but since it's a piece of dead wood, it's given me an idea. We've got a dead wood pile and dead wood piles often have little gems in them. So let's consign that one back and let's have a look at the dead wood pile. Thank you, horsey. Um, here's the horsey grease. Here's the dead wood pile. Um, it's not a very good dead wood pile at the moment, but it's got lots of bits in it. And there's some, I can see, so there's a very nice post there. What's this? Yeah, this might do. And you might think, oh, it's a bit boring. Well, it's not, it's old and weathered. Look at that. See, look, it's all old, it's like me. It's like all old and weathered. Um, and it would be very, very good. It's even got a bit that we can <laughs> put into the ground there. Uh, but what we could do is use this maybe to attract a woodpecker or a nuthatch. Or what we could do is staple a bit of moss to the top and a robin would sit on it. So our first one, and I just trod on another one on the way in as well, here. Be careful when you pick these up that you don't destroy them because when you pick them up, look at that. That's not bad. So you imagine that goes into the ground and you might get um, a nut hatch or something just like that one crawling up the side of it. You wouldn't get a woodpecker because that's too small, but a woodpecker you'd get on this one. So maybe we've got two really interesting branches there. Brilliant. It's a good start anyway. So let's see if we can find anything smaller around the garden that we can use for the smaller bird species. But that's a really good start. I'm really pleased. Now, one of the areas I like to come in the garden is, is somewhere that's a bit overgrown because that's often where you find your best perches. Um, and for me, um, I've got this kind of area here that's never, ever tended. And I can look on the ground. There's tons of broken branches, but a lot of them Again, it's got no interest at all. There's a lovely big branch here that's 
full of lichen you can see but again it's a bit big and clunky it's not delicate so you've got to be very specific and keep you just got to look there see. lichen that might do let's add that one to the pile we don't really know what's going to work until we get back let's have actually a look in the hedgerow all these buds coming out on the trees look amazing see have a good look and sometimes this one it's a bit rough and ready we'll have that one Oh, here's one with some moss. Yep, we'll have that one. Let's see what's over here, we're doing well. Now, I don't expect all of you to have a garden this big where you can find lots of rough branches. You might only have a few shrubs, or well, shrubs are good as well. Look at this, this guy that's growing in the garden. Um, there's some nice branches here that are really beautiful that we can, I'm not gonna cut one off now, because once you cut them off, they're live and they're gonna die and they will look rubbish after a couple of days. So, but this is the kind of thing that you could use because it's green, it's really nice, there's some, there's some shrubs on it. Uh, and we'll do this in lesson two, okay? We'll do some flowery, shrubby bits in lesson two. So let's go and put the ones that we've got now um, in the setup and see how they work. All right, Rouse's best perch, there we are. That's the one I've selected. It's very simple, I know, and you may think, oh, I've seen much better than that. Let's take things slowly because the point of this video is to get people who have never done this before to do something great in their garden with their local birds. Okay, it's very easy. So that's the point. I know you may think, oh, it's not a very nice branch, but for what we're gonna do now, it's absolutely brilliant. So let's look at how we set the whole thing up. Okay, so what's the basic idea? All right, so we've got a pole here, and the pole here is in a plant pot. And it's, it's a lot easier to put it in a plant pot because you can move it around wherever you want. So I've just stuck it in a plant pot. So I've got a pole where I'm going to attach our lovely branch at an angle like that. And next to it, I've got a bird feeder. And I've got one bird feeder, not several. You need just one bird feeder because what the, what the idea is, we're going to create a queue system. So we're going to have a bird that waits on here to get onto that feeder there because that's the only one that's available. All the others are gonna be blocked up. It's not gonna be blocked up all the time, it's just gonna be blocked up for when we're doing our photography because we don't want loads and loads of birds flitting in and out. We want a bird to sit and wait on here. If it's waiting to get on the queue because it needs the food, it's gonna sit on there for 10, 15 seconds maybe and that's exactly what we need to get our pictures, all right? So that's the basic setup that we're gonna use. Now you may think that garden birds are tame. They're not, they're not idiots, right? I mean, they're always on the lookout for cats, sparrow hawks, anything else, um, and you. They don't really like us being around very much until they get used to you. And that's gonna take time before you can sit here in your deck chair with your, your cocktail and your radio and your camera in the other hand. That's gonna take a while. So you have to figure out where you're gonna put this setup. Okay, here I've got it set up on the patio. So I'm gonna film from the patio doors. I could film from the lounge window. I could film from the garage, from the greenhouse, from the shed, from the car. Whatever you've got available to you, that's where you're gonna film from. I would suggest that the prime consideration, as well as where you sit for the birds, which of course, number one, is also the background behind you. You want to keep the background very, very simple and out of focus, okay? Later on, maybe we can have some bushes that are colorful in it, to give a bit of color, but now let's have a nice background that's at least 20 foot away. Now, I've photographed in very small gardens. In Finland, I photographed wax wings against the red house, and it was great. Um, out of focus, 20, 30 feet away, um, it looked like it was just a red bush. Okay, recently I photographed a kingfisher in India in someone's pond in their back garden with a piece of green netting out of focus in the background, okay? So it, it doesn't really matter what you use as your background as long as it's at least 20 feet away. And here, of course, it's a few hundred feet away, which is great and perfect for what we need. All right, so we've got our setup. We've decided on the background and we've got the perfect perch. Um, one of the things you, a lot of people don't think about is the angle of the perch. You have to get it parallel to where your lens plane is. What do I mean by that? Well, your front of your lens needs to be parallel like that with the branch. If it's not, and your branch is like this way, then you have part of the bird in focus. You have the branch going away out of focus, and it just looks rubbish. Okay, especially if the bird's sitting a bit forward, if it's a bit of a, a tubby one, like a tubby bullfinch or something, you focus on the eye, which is in front of the branch, the branch is out of focus. So you wanna get it parallel to where you're shooting. 
that will allow you to shoot at a lower aperture. You'll be at between 5.6 and 8, which means you'll keep your shutter speed nice and high, which means you'll be able to stop the motion because there's an awful lot of motion here and you're going to get a lot of blurred pictures. Okay, so parallel, work it out where it is parallel. You need your camera set up probably to do it. Okay, and work out what angle you want. And I would give it a nice angle like that. To attach it, you're probably going to use cable ties. I would use two, one above and one below. Tighten them, but don't tighten them fully. Get it exactly how you want it. Give, don't, don't do it like that so the bird's got nowhere to land. You've got to do it so the bird has got some space to land, but you've also got to have it so it's tight, so that when the bird does land, it doesn't really bounce up and down. Otherwise, A, it could break it off, but B, it won't like it very much. So uh, cable ties, I wouldn't use tape or anything. You could use garden twine as well. Just make sure it's tight and make sure it's really rock solid and it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so I've got the branch there. I used a second cable tie here uh, just because I felt it was a little bit loose. Um, if you want to be complete, you can cut them off because you don't want... Well, I would actually walk straight into it, which is not great because I'm accident prone. Um, we've got a nice angle. We've got everything ready. Um, before you tape everything up, what I would do, I would get the angle set as well. This is why you put it into a plant pot so you can get the angle exactly as you want it there. Check it again. Just make sure everything's fine. Um, and then leave it. Leave it alone now for a couple of days. Let the birds get used to it. Don't block up the holes. Let the birds get used to landing on this. It'll give you a chance to see if it's actually working or not. All right, so give it a couple of days. Make sure this is nicely stocked up. We've put a bit of food on the top as well there. It, it doesn't matter what you do. Just give the birds time to get used to it. Go away and amuse yourself somehow for two more days. Then come back and you'll be ready to do your photography and hopefully the birds will be landing on it all the time and going onto there. Well, I hope you can see that we really enjoyed making that and we hope it's really, really useful as a practical guide to get you started. Now, as well as that, I want to give you some tech hints and tips using some of my pictures, good and bad. So without further ado, here it is. All right, Sean and I would like to give you some top tips, although Sean's in fairness to Sean, not gonna say a lot. Right, uh, let's look at a bad picture first. Here you go, wow, that's awful. Why is it awful? You can't see the legs. Birds have got legs. And look at all those horrible bits on the branch where some idiot, thank you, Sean, um, has cut the bits off, uh, the other twigs off, and left uh, the little stubbly bits there. So uh, take that branch, break it in half, and throw it away so you never use it again and learn from your experience. All right, let's look at a good picture now. Nice picture of a robin branch going across. F5.6 keeps the background diffuse. Everything's in focus. 5.6 also keeps your shutter speed high. You want to be on a shutter speed of at least a thousandth of a second if you can get it because these birds move a lot and you'll see in your pictures there'll be little twitches. Shouldn't really do that to sheep, sorry. Cruelty to sheep there, Sean. Um, there'll be little twitches and uh, that will just blur your pictures. So keep your shutter speed nice and high. Okay, let's look at the next one. Yes, you can set up for portrait. You can crop it to this, take it landscape and crop it to portrait, but I don't want you to forget about portrait mode. If you put a stick vertically in the air, then the bird will sit on the side of it and will sit upright. It looks really, really good. Here I've got the, the blue tit on slightly on one side of the frame with the head tilted looking into the other. It's looking into space. It's nicely balanced. Look at where the center line is and where the eye is. I haven't quite got the twig coming out the bottom left-hand corner. I like to do that because it shows flow. I couldn't do that and make the thing work properly. You can see again the depth of field. Now this is actually F8 because the blue tit is leaning forward in front of the branch. If I want the blue tit and the branch in focus, which I do, then I need to use F8 and I need to think about the background as well uh, where it's all right, okay? Now this time, I'm starting to get a bit more advanced. I've put the branch on one side of the frame. I've composed it deliberately, and the blue tit is on that, leaning across, thinking I've got to jump across to sit on that sheep's head. No, to sit, sorry, Sean again, to sit on the bird feeder, okay? That's what it wants to do. So it's leaning to, to go out across. It's leaning across the frame. It's got a lot of nice space in that frame. Do not take the space out of your pictures. Leave the space. Space is good. Um, after I took this picture, I started to do action and flight shots. And that meant that I wanted to keep the aperture at 5.6. I wanted to keep the ISO 800 to keep the shutter speed 2,000th it probably was, or 3,000th to try and get some action. That's your next goal after you master this. All right, next one. Okay, 
perching, once you're bored with the, the, the same old perches, go and get a bit of flowering shrub like we spoke about before, put it down. Yes, you can cut off the thorny bits. You need to create a little space where the bird will land, but make sure you cover them up with a bit of mud from the ground or sheep poo. Yep, I've got my own supply here, or sheep poo, or um, a little bit of the a little bit of the flower itself. Whatever, just make sure you cover it up before you take the pictures. Don't do it in Photoshop. Do it beforehand. So very nice offset in the frame there on the on the side. You can see the blue tit looking in. The flowers are a big central point. Yeah, there's a few out of focus at the top. We don't really care. Okay, final picture. Shh. Kind of thing I love to do. I got a load of those flowers. I put them right in front of the camera with a hole in the middle. I shot through with a load depth of field of 5.6 to where I knew the bird was going to land. I should have got a more interesting branch than I actually did. Um, and you can see there that it, it, it creates a lovely window effect looking through these out of focus foliage at the bird. That's the kind of thing I want you to move to. I want you to go beyond the simple bird on a stick. I want you to get there, master it, get sharp pictures, understand about light and angles and stuff like that. And then I want you to explore and go your own way because that's the only way that you improve is to find your own vision and style. Isn't that right, Sean? You can't work with sheep these days. Well, what a bumper episode that was. I wanted to make sure that we didn't run over 20 minutes because uh, you've got better things to do uh, than watching me for 20 minutes. So I'm, I apologize for not putting in the questions and answers. We will do that separately for you. Um, Olympus people, I know you're writing to me about a setup guide for the Mark III and the 1X. We will also do that separately once we work out how to get the camera settings actually onto the Mac, which is our current problem we haven't done. Um, but I hope that you found that that was really useful as a basic guide to garden bird photography. Get out there, enjoy it, be safe. It's really important to be safe uh, and be safe at home and stay healthy, save lives. And next week we'll be back with another video on your local patch. We've been walking around here within five minutes of the house. We're completely isolated, so it's very, very safe, but it's amazing what we have found. So uh, look forward to that next week. Until then, be safe, be happy, and good luck with your garden bird photography.